Well, I have tried to be the designated family member who preserves primarily the photographs, things of that sort in our family. So in the most traditional sense, I wouldn't consider myself an archivist just because my end goal is not to archive anything, at least in a professional sense. I'm an art conservator. I uh, work on many different kinds of materials over the course of a 30-some year career. Uh, I've worked in various museums and uh, most recently worked with photographic materials as a conservator preserving uh, and restoring uh, materials of cultural heritage. Uh, so yes, I took on the task some years ago of trying to organize and preserve the many, many photographs that my mother and father had collected over the years that were just simply sitting in drawers in a shambles, loosely, not even in albums, uh, in boxes. I took the task on. The people who first started this preservation, um, they really understood that film and any sort of art object is just as historical as it is artistic. And knowing that, um, al they allowed themselves to pretty much build something that was really you know, substantial and really elaborate just for the sole purpose of preserving the history of people, of a country, of, you know, philosophy, of all these sorts of things because these films, um, these films embodied all of that. My background was one of, that, that uh, was a bridge between sciences and, and uh, materials and then uh, art and literature. So. Uh, the, the natural progression of me was to find a niche that combined both my interest in science and materials with art and culture. Well, I am not a technician regarding photographic images and the projected duration of those images. Yeah, I mean, technology is always like it's depreciating, the conditions are getting worse, and uh, unless, of course, like, I keep everything in tip-top shape. But I do know, just from having worked with my mother's collection, uh, that, oddly, the old black and white images taken with the original 1930s-era Kodak camera were almost in perfect condition and, and remain extremely high quality, along with, of course, countless negatives that are there in the collection. You might be interested to know that this could be enlarged uh, uh, probably about 10 to 15 times with no loss of resolution. So this, this two and a half by three inch photograph could cover this entire wall uh, as, a, as an expanded image. That's the resolution, the native resolution of a daguerreotype. I don't even know how I would do that, let alone if I have the resources to keep everything in optimal shape so that I could keep playing a game on the Nintendo 64 30, 40 years after the release of the, the system itself. Um, CDs are the same thing. Vinyl records are the same thing, but then again, vinyl records came out in the six. I have rec records from the 60s and 70s, and they still work. They're wobbly here and there, but they still work. Jean and I do not have children, so um, this means that uh, there's always the issue of who will really want this, who will really even care after I'm gone. The uh, color photographs taken with my brownie camera that I got in the 50s have deteriorated terribly and have, you know, and continue to deteriorate, even being kept in pretty good condition. I'm hopeful that the digitized images that I have in these photo books uh, will really 
last, well, I don't know. I would guess maybe, I, I hope to last indefinitely. I would hope they would be the kind of thing you could even put in a, you know, some kind of uh, storage uh, that would that would be there a hundred years from now. Rewinding a little bit, so yeah, it's it's a major mo motivation because preservation is not just for the present. You know, it, I don't I don't right. Necessarily so have my work in the preservation side has has been working on ways to mitigate that. So the reason I show this particular pair is one of them actually has a micro environment. It, this was. The original form that we know that, that came with documentation, but they go together in a, a sealed enclosure to hold the humidity at below 40% relative humidity, which prevents uh, glass decomposition and other things that can go on. Uh, so it's really sort of an experiment, but it's, it's really an object. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that preservation its definition doesn't limit itself for the present. It's not just appreciating uh, and saving the past for the present. It's appreciating and saving the past for all time, as long as you can uh, actually do it feasibly. Um, as long as you can feasibly do it, that's, that's the importance of preservation. So you need to have, you, you need to approach preservation with sustainability. If, if, you, if you ignore, sustainability and only want to preserve a certain film so you could show it and then after that since you've watched it you've done all you need to do and you're out of here then you're not actually preserving anything so you need to go in with a mindset that a lot of the things you're doing aren't necessarily for you but for someone else 10 15 100 years down the line and I think that's what's really cool too is that there's a selflessness in preservation um, and I think that's that that selflessness is a is a nice way to understand. Never mind. I'll end it with their selflessness. <laughs> Good. I'll just stop there. Uh, a doctor, no matter how well they 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 work to preserve a human life, eventually that life is going to die. So the patient lives as long as the doctor can keep uh, keep a patient alive, and then then that's it. Whereas the work of art that gets uh, conserved is going to live on beyond the life of the conservator and that record will be subject to review. Mm -hmm. So um, you are doing your work for the future and also doing using materials and understanding the more scientific understanding or, or cultural understanding you bring to the object allows you to make choices about you know whether to change its particular pathway uh, and and restore something, leave it as it is, or keep it in a state of uh, of preservation, which honors all the record that's there, which is almost an ideal state. But sometimes uh, it uh, is only a relic of what it was. I did it initially to um, be a gift to my mother. I continued them even after she passed away over five years ago. Not only for my own joy and enjoyment and pleasure, maybe someday this will be a photographic record that will be looked back on, that it's something priceless and something that uh, becomes a family treasure and a family history. I can't guarantee that will happen, and it doesn't even really matter because, quite honestly, I take enormous amount of enjoyment in in this task. This it's not a it's not a hardship task. It takes a lot of hours, but it's truly a pleasure.